about to meet gentlemen, a one-time cadet who is no longer with us. A sad case, but nevertheless instructive. Pilot to Bombardier. Pilot to Bombardier. a pilot, Bombardier Bubble Happy, returned to base. Wilco. Well, that was an extreme case. Just the same, those bubbles can be a headache to any one of you if you don't know what they're saying. Naturally, they've been put there to tell you the position of the axis of the vertical gyro. That is, whether it's maintaining a true vertical reference line, or whether it's tipped to one side. So that you'd get an error in deflection, like this. Now here is an experienced bombardier leveling his vertical gyro. What does he know about the relation of the bubbles to the gyro that the cadet didn't know? Or that you don't know? Let's review it. You know that the gyro axis maintains its position, no matter what the movement of its mounting. You know too how the leveling system operates. When you press in the lateral precessing knob, you cause the gyro to precess. If pressure or torque is applied to the left, the gyro precesses to the right and vice versa. The inner knob is for making large corrections and the outer knob is for slight corrections. To change the fore and aft position of the axis, torque is applied through the carden bearing against the housing of the gyroscope. That's how, when the pilot levels the airplane, the bombardier, in turn, levels the gyroscope. But even with the plane leveled, the bubbles also respond to the slightest change in the forward motion or attitude of the airplane. Any such change, acceleration, yawing, skidding, and so forth, will affect the bubbles. But none of these motions in any way affects the gyro axis itself. But then how does the bombardier know whether he's correcting for the movement of the airplane or for the position of the gyro? Suppose the lateral bubble is acting like this. Well, you can be very sure it's caused by the motion of the airplane and not by any movement of the gyro axis. So you wait before you attempt to level to see if the bubble will come to rest and then bring it back under the center line. If it doesn't come to rest, perhaps because of a flutter condition, then you must estimate the point around which it is oscillating and move the precessing knob until that point is under the center line. But when you first look at the bubbles and see one of them apparently still, don't assume it's at rest. It may have just finished moving in one direction and be about to return. Take plenty of time. A gyroscope one bubble's length off the vertical causes an error of 17.5 mils, which at 10,000 feet can mean this. Get in the habit of taking your time. Get your bubble on dead center and you're set for this.